Okay, welcome. Today I want to offer some reflections about Gabor Mate's book, The Myth of Normal, and especially relating it in to our leaders and then overlapping it with the work of Nick Duffel and his book here, uh, Wounded Leaders. So uh, enjoy. So I am very excited. The, the end of September, I'm going to be going up to Scotland to attend one of Gabor Mate's workshops. And while we're up there, we will be filming Susan Zedike, Alex Renton for the film, which is really exciting. Love to interview Gabor Mate, but unfortunately um, he's, he's too busy. Um, so hopefully that will unfold. But as I've been um, getting ready to go and spend uh, to do the workshop, I've been reading through his book. And it's really fascinating because he talks about the leaders. He talks about their trauma. He talks about Tony Blair and one of his interviews with Russell Brand about how Tony Blair will never admit his, uh, he's wrong. He will never admit about uh, what happened in Iraq. He's never apologized. Um, and I've heard other people say you know, uh, Boris Johnson's never admitted um, he's wrong. When I was interviewing someone recently for the film, saying, especially around what he said about child sexual abuse and the ICSA, the Independent Inquiry into Child Sexual Abuse, he's never apologized for what he said, which was very rude and offensive. So um, it's interesting, you know, he'll talk about these different people, uh, Gabal Mate, but he doesn't mention the word boarding school. So I want to just overlap that, and this is the idea of our film, to see, mm. you know, really drawing on the work of Nick Duffel, Apologise. There seems to be a helicopter going overhead. So, could it be that the reason we have these traumatised leaders is a part is boarding school? So, I just want to explore that a bit. So, reading from Gabor Mate, page three, four, four, he says, "The closer I look at who populates the political landscape, the people at the top." and we, we ourselves are at its base or somewhere in between for the more privileged among us, the more I see the wounded electing the wounded, the traumatized leading the traumatized, and inexorably implementing policies that entrench traumatizing social conditions. So Nick Duffel says something fascinating in his book, page 89, Wounded Leaders. He says, could it be that the British working class as an entire group have been suffering projective identification from the upper classes? Have they been standing in for the stupid, messy, incompetent children the latter wish to distance themselves from in their own collective psyche? Could this explain some of the unhappiness, the lack of self-respect, the grimness that sometimes marks the British working class as distinctive, as distinct from their counterparts in Europe? So I feel that kind of linking it in, the traumatised leading the traumatised, that almost the traumatised, you know, what he's saying here at, the, at its base, have been traumatised by the leaders. They've had their projection from our leaders onto, um, you know, those parts that we couldn't accept in boarding school, growing up, the vulnerable, the, um, the messy the stupid, the incompetent children within us. So that just kind of links into something Gabor Mate says there. And then um, he goes on to say, page 345, the traits most amenable to stewarding a socio-economic system that traumatizes populations as a matter of course will naturally be ones that inure the bearer to vital aspects of emotional life, meaning, you know, insulate, cut off from their emotions if not disabled, the compass, compassion circuitry outright. So again, Joy Chavrin, in her books, um, it's page two of her book, Boarding School Syndrome, she says, these men and women as children had to adapt to growing up in an inflexible system, boarding school, and learn to hide their emotions. And he's saying exactly the same thing. So it's almost 
in order for us to traumatize others, we are traumatized ourselves. And I'm suggesting Nick Duffer as well is that that's what boarding school does. It traumatizes us. Um, you know, I was speaking to David Howe, who's a retired professor, talking about neglect and the NSPCC. He said they say that. You know, neglect is the ongoing failure to meet a child's basic needs and the most common form of child abuse. And as I read the the stories, I was sharing this on GB News a few weeks ago. If you read some of the stories of, you know, what some of these people went through at boarding school. Uh, so David Cameron, he lost a stone in weight. They were basically just left to, to take care of themselves, age seven or eight. Richard Branson, I was looking at an interview with him, he went age seven and a half. He says, I remember distinctly, I was seven and a half, throwing up the first night and the matron coming in and telling me I had to mop up the sheets myself. I think that's a bit much for a seven and a half year old. He goes on to say, we got beaten all the time. You'd be beaten with a bare ass and sometimes until you bled. Yeah. And so, you know, there's so many stories of things like that, of people who are in positions of great power who are, they've been totally traumatised. Um, and then Gabal Mate goes on to say, when trauma manifests on the global stage, the consequences for people and the planet are massive. Politicians make policy after all, and policy creates or cements the very cu cultural conditions we know are anti antithetical to our health. The l level of trauma awareness or blindness they and we bring to the political conversation can't help playing itself out in the world we end up living in. So yeah, just some, uh, some reflections here of seeing how it really overlaps what Gabor Mate is saying about you know, our wounded leaders, this myth of normal, you know, in Britain, we've normalized boarding school. It's good for us. But actually listening to this professor, David Howe, he's saying, you know, a lot of these symptoms of neglect, I'm saying, well, that's the exact symptoms of boarding school syndrome. So it's almost like, and he's saying, struggle in intimate relationships, struggle to connect to our emotions, keeping people at arm's length, all of these things that that's what happens if we grow up in a ne neglectful environment. And as David Cameron saying, that is what it is. You know, he was just left and he says in his biography, it's surprised, surprising no one drowned in his school. Um, so, yeah, it's just kind of getting that sense of, ah, oh, there's an overlap here between boarding school and, um, and these, these wounded leaders. So final point really for um, from Gabal Mate, he says traumatic childhood experience has been shown to bear very directly on adult political orientations. Michael Milburn, emeritus professor of psychology at the University of Massachusetts, found that the harsher the parenting people were exposed to as young children, the more prone they are to support authoritarian or aggressive policies such as foreign wars, punitive laws, and the death penalty. Yeah. And obviously so many of us who went to boarding school and so many of our leaders, you know, had horrific punishments as we hear from uh, Richard Branson, but then um, Bear Grylls as well. He talks about being beaten up by an older boy in his room and the, the boy putting him in an arm lock that he Bear Grylls felt that his arm was going to snap, his shoulder was going to snap. And these are the types of things that these leaders, these people in positions of power have been through, you know, and therefore, yeah, the more prone we are, the, you know, the harsher the parenting, the more prone they are to support authoritarian and aggressive policies. So yeah, just some fascinating ideas. Um, I'm really looking forward to going up to, to, to Scotland to, to do these interviews 
and to listen to to Gabor speak. Um, but yeah, um, I'll keep reading through his book and I'll I'll share more ideas and thoughts as they uh, they come up. Okay, thank you.